past week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has been a hot one, it's been, well, we're thankful. I know what it's like to, you do as well, to be out in it when it's really hot, and I know what it's like to be out in it. And <coughs> like you know, coats on, you know, it is so, so cold. Some of you may not understand that. Some of you very hot natures. I thought I was hot natured until I met some and we found that I'm must be on the cold side, I guess. But it is good to be back in the house of the Lord. I'm thankful for his grace. I'm thankful for his love. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to save you back to your house today to worship you in the spirit and truth. Father God, we are blessed to today, God, to be in the church of God. We pray now, Lord, you help us to go into our word. Lead us today, God, I pray, with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord had given us this thought sometime during the course of the week. Now, I was up earlier than normal this morning awake, meditating and thinking on this message. We're at a time that we'll see this as we get into this today. But I believe that we're at a crossroad. Amen. The title of the message is Crossroads and crosshairs. Crossroads and crosshairs. The word crossroads means it's an intersection of, we know, two or more roads. It also means it's a point at which a crucial decision must be made that will have far-reaching consequences. Have you ever felt like that in your life that you were at a crossroads? It might have been at a job, you know. It might have been purchasing a vehicle, home, you had a place of uncertainty. You just didn't know what to do. But you sought the Lord and you was trying to find the, the mind of the Lord, I hope. Amen. Because I believe in every decision we need to have the mind of the Lord in. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He knows past, he knows present, he knows future. Amen. That's right. He knows what's coming down the roads. Praise the Lord. Beyond the crossroads, God knows exactly what's coming down, as the old saying goes, coming down the pipe. Amen. It is good for you and I to seek the Lord in behalf of everything. Amen. Amen. Every decision, every thought that we're going to explore, it is good to find the, the mind of the Lord and Know that we're walking according to his divine will. Amen. I can tell you, and me and Sister Tanya was talking just recently, there's been some decisions that I and we have made in the past, you know, 24 years of marriage that I look back on, my Lord, and pray that I wish I could change. I didn't feel like that I Sought the Lord enough. Pray for me this morning. We're going to get into the meat of this in just a moment. Bless just laying it out here. That I didn't find the mind of the Lord. And it caused some problems. It caused some, <clears throat> some heartache. It caused some, plainly said, some financial strain on my family because I didn't. And I take the blame. I didn't seek the Lord as I should have sought the Lord because I look back and I see that God would have led me into that. Amen. Amen. Because it brought, amen. Oh, Lord, help me. A damper or a dark cloud mm -hmm. over our family for several years. Amen. Amen. 
time. We all have times in our lives in the natural that we come up to a situation that we have to make a decision. Well, the same thing holds very true spiritually. That's right. There's many times in our lives help me Lord today that we come up to a intersection spiritually right. that we will be tested that we will be if you would brought to a place that we have to seek the Lord in and know in his mind for a surety that we make the right decisions for our soul. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can't go as the masses go. We can't go as the crowds go. See, crowds a lot of times, oh Lord, help me right here. They don't think it through. Lord, help me today. You praying for me? Amen. This is one, oh God, I need you today. They'd rather, amen, go with the flow than take a stand for what's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. As you and I that are spiritual minded and are trying to follow the Lord in everything, there will be times that you will be considered an outcast. That's right. Amen. You will be considered of not belonging. Oh God, keep praying for me. Amen. You'll be considered as one that no one wants to be around. That's right. Was it no different with the master? Oh God, help me. Amen. There came a time in his life, the Bible says, that they all forsook him uh, and fled. Right. Amen. Amen. He was left alone. Oh, can you picture that in your mind? The truth, the way, the life was left standing alone. Amen. He only came into this world to, to help the world. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord to give the world life. Who to renew man back to where he was before the fall. He only wanted good for, amen, you and I. Amen. But once a man forsook him at a crossroads in their existence spiritually. Amen. Amen. They chose to go down a different path. Fortunately, the section of war they were all gathered back. The fragments, if you would, we're, we're gathered back together as a whole. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. The Lord said in the New, the New Testament, book of St. Luke 12 and 51, I've alluded to this passage before. This is the Lord talking, said, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. You know what we celebrate at Christmas time? Amen. Amen. Peace, goodwill toward me. Amen. Amen. It is peace when you have Jesus in your in your soul. Amen. But the non-peace kicks in, if you would. When you have that time of intersection with those that don't see it your way. That's right. Amen. There'll be some conflict. There'll be some interaction. Lord help me. There'll Bless be some Lord. words no doubt exchanged. Bless them, Lord. There'll be some debates. Not trying to get into them. <laughs> oh God. I'll defend the gospel. Amen. Amen. You've been commissioned to defend. You're a, a Christian today. You've been commissioned by God Almighty to defend what's right. 
Hallelujah. In a world that's I mean, going chaotic. Amen. I'm going down many different paths and many different roads. It's our duty as a Christian, hallelujah, to stand up for what is right. Amen. amen. In a world that's going down a road of, amen, backsliding and sinning. Amen. Amen. It's our response and duty. Oh, yeah, response and duty. Responsibility and duty to stand <coughs> what we're in the crosshairs. Crosshair is a pair of fine wires. Those of you who've ever hunted, you know what I'm talking about. You look through a scope, military and all, you know what I'm talking about. It's real fine lines or fine wires crossing at right angles. It's perfect 90 degree angles there. You have it that you can focus in with your gun sight. You use this for position and for aiming. Some might be good enough not to have a scope, but at a distance. Crosshairs, a scope, is needful in the physical. Amen. But if you're a Christian today, I can tell you, oh Lord, help me. Even the midst, in the midst of your own brethren and sisters, sometimes it feels like that you're in one's crosshairs. That's right. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. You're just trying to do what's right. Amen. You're just trying to stand for what God has showed you in His Holy Word. That's right. Amen. Bless Him, Lord. But by once, amen, help me, God, loose living in lifestyle of the world has caused them to go down different paths. They now, amen, are, are focusing on you and you dare not even say nothing. Bless them, Lord. You dare not, amen, make a comment or withstand anything because then you'll be considered an outcast. That's right. You'll be considered, amen, not loved. Lord, help me. Because you bite against the system. No! No! The true system should be truth. That's right, amen. amen. Hallelujah! The way, the life. That's the system that we must flow in. Amen. amen. Not a system of compromise and letting down, no. Amen. Oh, God, help me today. When you are approached, amen, for the name of Christ, the Bible said, don't be ashamed of it. That's oh, right. God Almighty, when it comes to a point in our lives, amen, that crosshairs, amen, are focused right in on you and I. Don't be ashamed, amen, to deliver what God has showed you in His divine word, in the principles and law book. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God, the Bible. Don't be afraid. That's right. Amen. The Lord said again, suppose ye that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I tell you, nay, but rather division. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're at this time right now, Church of God. I don't know how many see this and feel this. I can feel it like I also can see it. Lord, help me today. I believe the body, the church, is at a crossroads. Sure is. Right now, I believe it's our 26th teaching, if I'm not mistaken. It's being questioned by, not locally, but being questioned by some members. In another state, they're questioning, not just one or two, but several are questioning. The teaching that's in the Word of God has been around for years, and the Church of God just incorporated it in the teaching because it's in the Bible. Right. Wearing gold against wearing gold for me. Crossroads. 
something, amen, that's been clarified in my mind many years ago. Amen. That's right. That I don't have to second guess that principle. I don't have to second guess that law that God has laid down in his word. Praise be to God. Amen. That truth that gives life unto me and you. If you and I, amen, choose, choose, choose to follow it. That's right. Amen. One state there are spirits and peace and joy and all of this out here. What they don't realize is only for a season. Amen. That's right. Amen. amen. It's so brief, brother. But we had three calls yesterday. Mm. Day before yesterday or so, and I work at a funeral home for some that don't know that's be watching this later. We had three as well. It's like right now, it seems like our business is picking up. And I can tell you, we we had one recently, I believe it was 103. She lived a, a long life. Had one that was 96, I believe. Thank you, Lord. We had one that was in their 30s. Mm -hmm. Had one that I went to pick up recently up from Beaufort County was 51. Life is, the Bible calls it a vapor. Mm -hmm. That's right. Ones are here today and gone tomorrow. You ever put a pot of water on your stove and you start seeing the steam? That's what the, the Bible is trying to allude to there. Right. That you see that steam or that vapor just for a moment. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you don't see it no more. See, that's what life is in comparison to eternity. You might live to be the right old age of 103. Not many do. That's right. You may be 80, 90. You might be 70. Still, amen. A good life, I feel. But what is that in comparison to the rest? Choose you this day. Bless us, Lord. Who you will serve. Help us, Lord. Are you going to serve the gods of this world? Oh, hallelujah to God. Help us, Lord. Or will you serve the true and living God today? Amen. I believe the body, the church is at a crossroads. Amen. There was a God that made the right decision. Oh, hallelujah. Of what path you're going to walk down. Choose it. Make your decision. Amen. 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 Stand for what you know is right in the word of God. Amen. That gives true peace and true joy and true happiness. Amen. Oh God, you don't find it in things of the world. You don't find it. Amen. In loose living. You don't find it. Amen. In the, the cigarette smoking. You don't find it. Amen. In the cursing and swearing and the partying and the drinking. You don't find it. It's all momentarily. I'm talking about something that will be eternal for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you. Hallelujah. That will last forever and ever and ever. Amen. Glory be to God. Something that will keep you. In the middle of the night, a meal and your body is ailing in pain. You can lay there in bed and call upon the one that you've been serving, you've been faithful to. And he hears you and he answers your prayer. Amen. Jesus said, Verse 52 of St. Luke 12. Continuing therefore. From henceforth there. Shall be five in one house. Divided. Five 
tithe than one house divided. Isn't that a shame? That five people can't get along spiritually and agree under one roof. Amen. Lord said it happened. That five would be in one house and can't come together. When that crossroads of life comes their way, amen, they can't come together in the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Five shall be. In five in one house divided. Three against two. Two against three. The father shall be divided against the son. And the son against the father. It is sad. Mm -hmm. The mother against the daughter. The daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. can't be agreement because ones have chosen their path. That's right. Lord, help me. You have to keep on standing for what you know is right. Amen. Even in the middle of adversity. Amen. Don't give in. Don't cave in. Don't give up. You know what you have learned? You know what you've been assured of. That's right. From the youth up. Oh God, I've been with this thing all my life. Amen. You know my testimony. I was brought to the church of God as a baby. Just a, amen, a few weeks old, I believe. It was, I was brought. It's all I've ever known. And I'm thankful for that, Brother Otis Ray. I know the right. I know the wrong. Some of you have been in it longer than I have. You know, amen, what you was raised in. You know what's right. You know what to abstain from. Mm -hmm. Some don't have clear understanding of that. Mm -hmm. But you have got to have, amen, a countenance and a spirit about you to let come what made toward me let all the gunfire, if you would, be focused on me. Let me be in their crosshairs. But I'm going to stand for Jesus. Amen. And let the world go by. Amen. Bless him. Now let me encourage you. In that stand, you got to stand in the right spirit. Amen. That's right. There was many times, amen, the Lord, amen. He was angry. There in the temple. I mean, you think about it. They come in there, amen, and buying and selling. There's a place for that, but it won't in the Father's house. Amen. <laughs> amen. He overthrew the tables and the doves and all they were trying to sell. Just, oh, I'm glad I'm free now. You know, they're, they're getting on out. He said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. If you made it into a den of thieves. Amen. Amen. Has that not happened, amen, in other ways as well? Oh, Lord, help me today. Not just in buying and selling, but bringing things into the house of God, amen. I ain't talking about physically. I'm talking about, amen, our spirits. Amen. amen. Bringing things into the house that, amen, that, oh, God, that occupies thieves' minds. Amen. Get him back. Backbiting. Won't talk to that one. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. Congregating here and, amen, congregating there and having sex, you know, divisions, groups in the house of God. There should not be division amen. in the body. Amen. But that's where we're at today, the cross, amen, roads of the church of God. Amen. Believe with all my heart. We're not seeing eye to eye and speaking the self same thing no more. That's right. Help us, Lord. We're in the Amen. same boat we were in back in the early 90s. Amen. Help us, Lord. We're in the same boat. Bless him, Lord. So you better know where, amen, right is at. That's right. 
And you better know where wrong is at. It better be a clear distinction in your thinking That's right. of what's right and what's wrong. There's a lot of gray in this church. But it better not be in your thinking. Amen. That's right. Of what's right and what's wrong. Yes. Amen. And you better teach the right to your children. Amen. You better teach the right to your children. One, you've been given. Oh, Lord, help me today. You've been given them. Amen. By God Almighty. You better teach them the right. I believe we'll be held accountable. Amen. If we don't Amen. teach our kids. Amen. The right and true way. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Lord said, I didn't come to bring Lord. peace. Help us, Lord. I've come to bring division. Mm -hmm. And I hope we know what he's saying there. You will have peace in the cross when you get saved. Mm -hmm. But everybody's not going to experience that peace with you. That's right. Some's going to claim to have a peace. But they want a piece of this and a piece of the world too. Mm. Help them, Lord. It'll never work. That's right. Can sweet water bring forth bitter? Nope. And I've drunk some bitter water. I've also drunk some water straight out of the ground. Some of the best water I've ever drunk come from the, amen, a spring up there in Virginia called the Warwick Spring. I've shared it with you before. Gallons. You think I'm crazy. We need to take a field trip one day. I'll show you if you're still there. <laughs> Gallons per hour. I've seen some springs. You've probably seen some springs. I had a member up there. I said, I want to show you a couple of springs. Carry me to one, and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't see no spring, you know. Finally, he moved back some brush and all, and there it was, just a little, little bubble. Amen. Just a little water occasionally come forth from the ground. It was a spring. It won't spring in a lot, but it was a spring. <laughs> and now I'm going to carry it to the Warwick Spring. You might can find it online. I think it's W Y R I C K, Warwick Spring. I've never seen nothing like it, Brother Trey. They had built this protection brick, almost like a chimney type thing above it so nobody wouldn't contaminate it, throw stuff in there. But they had it such that that spring would come out, would come under that threshold. It would go down and water the cattle, the different ones down in the valley there. There's enough water back in the day. It was gone then. But back in the day, there was a hotel right above it. There was enough water from that spring to take care of that hotel. Pressure and all. Didn't need no help. Never seen nothing like it. Isn't that how the, our lives should be, amen, in serving God, that out of a well should go forth springs of living water? Amen. Mm -hmm. amen. I'm talking about truths. Just gushing out. Gushing out. Gushing out, not compromising, not amen, worldliness. I'm talking about amen, the true, amen, pure word of God flowing and flowing and flowing from us. That's what changes lives. Amen. That's what changes lives. That one's amen can experience the true and living God. Amen. If we can part these tiles and part these skies and if your vision was good enough, he was up there. And I don't think people really quite grasp that reality. There is a God. Because Brother Shrey, I believe that they would do some of the things they do if their, if their focus was totally clear. I began to study this message. My mind went to counting the 
word that we're all familiar with. We Hebrew children, Jews, we Jews that were appointed by Nebuchadnezzar over a province there called Babylon. We know the account. I was doing some more digging into it. It was really interesting. I'd never seen this part. But whenever he made the, the graven image or the statue, according to, if you break it down, it was 90 feet tall. You know how it is sometimes with people in their living, they don't mind just flashing it. What do you mean, Brother Mark? It seems like that ones that might have walked this way, Sister Leslie, at some point, come to a crossroads in their life and they, they chose the wrong, mm -hmm. then it seemed like it was immediate. They were very blatant in how they lived. Amen. In other words, they, they didn't care. I mean, they, they didn't care who saw or who thought or anything. They just they came. And that's what came to mind when I when I thought about this statue. Not that Nebuchadnezzar was and was the type thing, but how big and all he made it. It just, it just stuck with me that he was very proud of that thing. Mm -hmm. We better be proud of our maker. Amen. Amen. And worship and lift him up. Because he's the only one true God. Amen. And that was very evident there in this account in Daniel, the third chapter, when these boys were put to a test. The Bible says, and we know the account there in the Word, how these a time was come that the king said at the sound of the the, <coughs> court, the flute, the harp, or whatever the instruments were, all sounds of music you would bow. And all the governors and all the sheriffs and all the different ones there were gathered together. And they were under the command appointment as well. Thank you, Lord. It was under the appointment of the king and you know, right there, they were put to the test. If they were going to to bow or not. And I can just imagine in my mind, I can just imagine in my mind that as they looked across this vast kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, and this was a serious thing, he had set up this idol that and he, amen, he orchestrated it all so all would be there. Don't you stay, you're not staying at home, you're coming, you're going to bow down to this idol that I have made. This 90 foot, this Ephesus. I can just imagine the carvings and all those things. It's probably immaculate. Mm -hmm. This false god. That the sound of all the music you would bow. And I can just picture Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego as they're hearing the king talk. They had come to a crossroads. But their answer was very clear mm -hmm. when they didn't bow. So they'd already had a relationship with the true God. Amen. And they were not going to bow to no false god. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's Amen. what happens today in this world. There's too many bowing to things they shouldn't bow to. Amen. That's right. Amen. Their allegiance, their loyalty is to that, amen, other thing than the one in true, praise God, living God. Amen. That can give you all eternity and give you everlasting life. One's one, amen, a temporary happiness. I can have both. That's right. I can have happiness now, and I can have happiness throughout all eternity. Praise God. Amen. Amen. 
That's if right. you choose the right path. That's right. Ones are at a crossroads. Yeah. The Bible says choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Either the gods, amen, of, amen, they're in Egypt or the one and true living God who you're going to serve. That's right. And the Bible goes on to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So that's what happened. There were the three Hebrew children that already settled in their minds and in their hearts. We will serve the Lord. Amen. 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 They come up to that crossroads. And probably in their mind, I know what we read earlier, our definition of a crucial decision, but probably in their mind, it wasn't crucial at all. Right. It already settled in their spirit that they weren't going to bow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't it kind of interesting, too? Picture this in your mind, the vastness of people that were there. That at the sound of the music, they were supposed to bow, and everybody bowed, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo, they just kept their position. But by keeping their position, they were highlighted. They were singled out. Mm -hmm. I hadn't moved. I'm still where I always was. You know? Doesn't that sound familiar? Years ago, and I'm closing, years ago we was in attending a cast, uh, revival in Castellia. Brother Shrey's mom was a pastor. We had a lot of youth at the Wilson Church. And she had asked us to conduct a revival. Different ones spoke each night. And I'll never forget. It's always been etched in my mind throughout all these been many years now. The message that my, my cousin uh, spoke that night. The essence of that message was God has not changed. Mm -hmm. We have changed. Amen. So that's the one thing about God. He remains constant. That's right. Amen. He remains the same. If there's any change, if there's any faltering, backing away, going down the wrong road, it all lies with you and I. That's right. Amen. 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 What path will you choose today? Will you choose the path of righteousness and holiness? Or will you choose the path of the temporary? Yeah, you can have pleasure in sin. The Bible says that. There's pleasure in sin, but it, it's only for a season. It's only for a short amount of time. Amen. But serving God, oh God, having a relationship, a true relationship with, amen, Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about today. That'll last you now.